So there's a new story out there that solves a little bit of a mystery. Uh, in that ever since the 1960s, where people first flew uh, space probes around the far side of the moon, so the side of the moon that we don't actually get to see from the Earth, that, and started taking pictures, they found that actually, rather bizarrely, the far side of the moon looks very different from the near side of the moon, in that there are many more mountain ranges on the far side of them. The, the near side of the moon it has some craters, but mostly it's these sort of big flat plains, these things called seas or mares. So it, it's always been a bit of a mystery as how you can form um, a, an astronomical body like the moon with one side of it so different from the other side of it. So there's now an explanation as to probably how this came about, which is it, it, there's a reasonably well accepted theory as to how the moon formed, which is sometime early in the formation of the solar system, there was no moon, but some uh, other body in the early solar system came along and smacked into the Earth, sort of threw a whole load of material up into space, and that material coalesced to form the moon. Um, and so this new idea is that maybe it didn't originally coalesce to form one body, maybe it initially coalesced to form two bodies, one rather larger than the other. And in fact, you can do that, and the two objects will happily share the same orbit for some considerable time, but eventually they'll probably bump into each other. And, this is what, and, and bumping into it, each other is probably the right way of thinking about it, in the sense that they, they did merge with one another, but it wasn't a huge, massive collision. Because if you have a huge, massive collision, either you'll smash them to pieces, or you'll, at the very least you'll end up forming a huge impact crater or something like that. So probably the two sort of merged together relatively gently. And when they merged together, the place, the side of the moon where all this extra material got added would form a whole load of mountains. It's basically mostly the material that you've added on, but also the, kind of the impact on the, on the surface will kind of create folds and new, new mountains and so on. There will be some molten rock formed because it's still reasonably hot when all this happens. It's a reasonably energetic collision. That molten rock will then flow around to the other side of the moon and produce the very smooth uh, kind of lava flows that we see on the other side of the moon. So this is a rather neat model for actually explaining how you can end up with a moon that looks so different on the two sides. Okay, I'm gonna work with the 16 here and see what I can do. Good. And what did you do, Dave? I'll tell you, my hands stuck. Is this based on any evidence, or is this just a hypothesis that makes a lot of sense? It's a, so the the guys who've done this have done a series of calculations to figure out that you can actually have these kind of three body systems that they will coexist happily. So the Earth and these two moons will coexist happily for a long time. And that actually when they do merge together, you can arrange things without being too kind of contrived about the whole thing. They will actually tend to merge in this fairly gentle fashion. They won't smack into each other at a high speed. I suspect it will probably be a kind of a, a, a plausible theory for the foreseeable future in that you might, for example, one way of trying to figure out whether two things, whether a particular object is formed from two separate things is to look at the chemical composition and see if it varies from place to place. But here, of course, both the moons formed in the same original impact. And so actually they were probably made up of more or less the same material. And so you're probably not really going to be able to tell which is one moon and which is the other, when you, even if you could collect large samples from the moon. I think, yeah, plausible, probable. Yeah, I'd be happy with probable. It's, it, you know, it, 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 so the, the essence of science is to try and come up with the simplest explanation that explains as many things as possible. It's this thing called Occam's razor that says you, the simplest explanation is the best. And the nice thing is that this single uh, idea actually explains quite a lot of the properties of the moon. So as such, it's kind of a good theory, but it is still a theory. When astronomers were trying to figure out where the moon came from, mm -hmm. they eventually came up with this collision theory. Now they're trying to figure out why the moon has these two different aspects to it. And again, they've come up with a collision theory. It just seems like every time there's something they can't figure out, they say, oh, it must have been a big collision. It's always fun smashing things into each other. It's the same with galaxies, right? The way we like to make bigger galaxies is by, by smashing smaller galaxies together. It's always fun to crash things into each other. The continuity of outcrops, which are rounded at about the uh, 40 to 50 percent level down. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. See that? All the yeah. way across. Yeah. 